Welcome to Vanadium. This is Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. I thought evolution always moved slowly, with just tiny alterations adding up over eons of time, a slow drift in the direction of change. Evolution is supposed to rely on the glacial pace of random mutations and selection pressures to modify the shape and function of living things. It's not supposed to happen overnight. It's supposed to be a slow burn, not an explosion. One of the things I appreciate and love about reality is the way it subverts and even insults our expectations. No matter how much science advances, no matter how much we know, we're always on the verge of a new wake-up call. For evolutionary biologists, this wake-up call came in the form of the Cambrian explosion. This is biology's unexplained moment, biology's Big Bang. It all started about 540 million years ago, when the Earth was a much simpler place. It was a bit hot, and the weather was definitely more temperamental than it is now. But there were no plants, birds, snakes, insects, or animals. Barely an organism bigger than a cell. Earth was free of any visible life. One would think it would take quite a while for these single-celled microbes to come together and generate complex plants and animals. However, that's not what happened. That's not the way it worked. The world as we know it seemed to bloom from the prehistoric soup quickly and out of nowhere 540 million years ago. The earth sprang to life all of a sudden. The strange rapid appearance of fossils was first noted by William Buckland in the 1840s. In 1859, in his book on the origin of species, Charles Darwin discussed this explosion in the fossil record as the main challenge to his theory of evolution that focused on slow modification through natural selection. The sudden appearance of Cambrian flora and fauna without apparent precursors is one of the key mysteries of all of science. What could have caused such a rapid change? And what would that imply about the origin of animal life? What would it mean about our history? Looking back so far into the past is difficult. There's a limited supply of evidence a spotty, incomplete fossil record, and just a handful of samples of chemical residue locked in ancient Cambrian rocks. The first Cambrian fossils discovered, the first animals appearing on Earth, were trilobites, ancient extinct marine arthropods. Scientists still can't explain the huge leap in biological complexity that must have occurred to produce tens of thousands of these species. Trilobites no longer exist on the planet today, but they closely resemble many life forms we're all familiar with. Where did the trilobites come from? Who were their ancestors? In the fossil record, these species seem to be ghosts. Charles Darwin considered the sudden appearance of a lone group of trilobites with no apparent antecedents and an absence of other fossils to be undoubtedly of the gravest nature among the difficulties in his theory of natural selection. Darwin proposed that earlier oceans had in fact swarmed with complex living creatures, but their fossils had been destroyed. In the sixth edition of On the Origin of Species, he described this problem further, saying, to the question why we do not find rich, fossiliferous deposits belonging to these assumed earliest periods prior to the Cambrian system I can give no satisfactory answer. American paleontologist Charles Walcott proposed that an undescribed period of time he called the Lapalian for some reason didn't preserve animal remains and was not represented in the fossil record. Walcott and many other paleontologists now believe that the ancestors of the Cambrian animals must have evolved during this time. Fossils or organisms' bodies represent the best, most informative and convincing type of evidence. The trouble is, fossilization is a very rare event. Most fossils are totally destroyed by erosion or metamorphism before they can ever be found. So the fossil record itself is very incomplete. Also, since most animal species are soft-bodied, they decay long before they can even become fossilized. Earlier Precambrian fossil evidence has been found since Charles Darwin first described this mystery. 
Currently, the oldest evidence of life goes back around 4,000 million years, or 4 billion years. Rocks discovered in Australia seem to contain fossils of stromatolites, or stubby pillars formed by colonies of bacteria. Fossil traces of more complex eukaryotic cells, from which all animals, plants, and fungi are built, have been found in rocks from around 1,400 million years ago in China and Montana. Although that gives us something closer to an answer, the organisms that left those fossils are still completely alien from the modern organisms we see today. Scientists do have a few new theories to explain biology's Big Bang. Andrew Parker, a zoologist from the Natural History Museum of London, has proposed that predator-prey relationships may have driven this explosion of life. Prior to the Cambrian period, hunting and evading were both close-range exercises. For a long time, smell and touch were the only senses available. When predators could finally see their prey from a distance, new, more complex and creative defensive strategies were called for. Camouflage, poison, armor, and similar defenses may have evolved as a response to nature's invention of vision. The ability to avoid predator attack is often the difference between life and death. It's no surprise, therefore, that it's one of the strongest components of natural selection. The pressure to adapt is stronger on the prey than it is on the predator. Think of it this way. If the predator fails to win the contest, it loses a meal. If the prey is the loser, it has to wait to be reincarnated. However, there is quite a bit of evidence that predation was common long before the start of the Cambrian period. Other scientists say it's unlikely that the appearance of predation was the trigger for the Cambrian explosion. Another theory concerns the ancient atmosphere. The amount of ozone needed to shield Earth from biologically lethal levels of UV radiation is believed to have been reached around the Cambrian period. The presence of the protective ozone layer may have enabled the development of much more complex life. It also allowed for life on land, as opposed to life being restricted to the water to avoid the radiation. Other scientists suggest the explosion may not have come down to a single significant evolutionary event. It may represent a threshold being crossed in genetic complexity. The idea is life developed slowly for a while and somehow met a mysterious tipping point that pushed it into rapid diversification. And there are others who have even stranger theories for life's Big Bang. A few have even speculated that some kind of scientifically advanced intervention took place eons ago and gave rise to pretty much everything we see in nature today. One could describe that as alien, or perhaps divine influence. It's interesting to me that evolutionary biologists and physicists have run into the same obstacle in their fields. Two entire branches of science are struggling to explain miracles. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.